welcome to the Comstock channel. My name is Brian Hendrickson. Today I have Matthew Cruz with us from the field actually. Um, as you can see, he's in the combine right now. Welcome, welcome. Hey Brian, how are you doing? Good. I, I'm going to guess you're a little busy. <laughs> um, but let's talk about how your fields are doing. You know, it's going pretty well. We got a beautiful fall day here in Clay County, Iowa. Temperatures probably around 60 degrees and uh, uh, there's no wind right now, so that's nice. Um, you know, fields are cutting pretty clean. Um, you know, we're making pretty good progress. You know, yield is kind of all over the place. Uh, it's fairly spotty. Um, at this spot I'm in right now, I look the, the yield monitor says it's close to 80, but uh, I don't think the whole field's going to average that. Uh, we've had a lot of places that were in the low 60s, so um, I don't know. I'm hoping that it's going to end up close to, to 70 overall. Um, that would be above APH for us. You know, we uh, for most of the season, we had pretty timely rains on this farm, but, uh, you know, we did run into that uh, really high temperatures there in late August. And I think that might eclipse us a little bit. So, I mean, the the uh, actual plants, you know, have a lot of pods on them. They look great. I just think that the bean size and the weights are going to be off a little bit just because of the the kind of that flash drought right at the end of the season there, and, and that that those triple digit temperatures took a little bit of yield away from us. Um, how much percentage have you guys harvested, and how much do you guys have left? Uh, we have probably harvested probably 80% of our acres overall. Um, we're making pretty good progress. We'll probably, if nothing breaks down, uh, we'll probably have the beans done by tomorrow already. So um, that's good. I think, uh, you know, most of the state is, of Iowa is over 50% done already. And so um, I think everything's going out on time. Uh, we're probably gonna get some rain here on uh, starting Thursday and Friday, so we'll get a little bit of a rain delay, but uh, hopefully we can pick up uh, the rest of the corn next week, and so there's only about 500 acres left of corn, um, yeah, so we're making pretty good progress. So let's kind of switch machines, I should say. Let's talk about Brazil and their planting season. Yeah, right now, obviously, we're, we're in the middle of harvest, but uh, we're, we're kind of right over the hump, I think, right now, and so you're going to see the trade begin to kind of shift focus away from harvest in the United States and the planting season in Brazil. And so uh, overall Brazil uh, early in the week was probably about 15% complete. Um, most of the progress is in the state of Paraná in the south and uh, in the state of Mato Grosso. You know, it's been leaning drier in Mato Grosso so far. But I think they've been getting enough spotty rains that people are willing to, to kind of risk it and uh, go ahead and plant, even if it is kind of dry. And so they're getting just enough, I think, to get by and kind of get the crop germinated and get it going. So I, I think you'll see uh, the, the planting really begin to accelerate in Brazil in the next couple of weeks. And that's where a lot of the focus in the soybean trade and the grain trade is going gonna, is gonna to look towards here um, you know, going forward. Do you think the rains are going to continue, or what do you think you're going to see? Well, I think, you know, they're, for the, at least for the foreseeable future, the next, you know, two-week forecast, you're seeing heavy rains in the southern part of Brazil to the point of flooding. And if anything, that's probably uh, slowed up the planting progress down there. Um, but it's still going in on time, and uh, I think, you know, I read that in the state of Paraná, something like 94% of the, the – uh, crop conditions so far was like the NIT rated 94% good to excellent. So I think the conditions are pretty good. Um, you know, I talked to one person in, in central Mato Grosso, uh, one farmer that uh, already has two thirds done. And so he's way ahead of the curve. You know, the state is uh, only like 10 to 15% complete. And so, uh, you know, there's people that are pretty aggressive and getting an early start. And there's people that are just starting now. Uh, and and uh, just because they wanted to wait for more assurances that the rainy season was going to start up. So as time goes on, the probability does increase that uh, the rainy season is getting closer and it's going to build. Um, but, uh, you know, as, as a general statement, what they're saying in El Nino years like this in Brazil is that it's going to be drier in the north. 
which is where most of the production is now centered. You have 70% of your production in that, uh, uh, you know, center west to, to northeast region of Brazil. And so, you know, it hasn't even begun raining in the northeast part of Brazil. And so a lot of those areas don't even start until uh, November. And so there's still plenty of time yet, but uh, I, it doesn't look like the crop is going to go in late or anything like that. But we'll just have to see. It is possible that you'll run into some dry periods um, later on in December and January. All right, as we wrap up, let's kind of shift back to you. How are yields? I know that we keep on collecting yields, but how are yields coming in around you? You know, in our immediate region, we've been pretty fortunate this year. Um, I would say we kind of deserve it just because we've it's been very dry in our, our area in Northwest Iowa the last three years. Um, not to say there aren't tr some trouble spots, but uh, um, just I'm um, here, I'm loading into the grain cart as we're going here. So. Um, but I, I think overall in our immediate area, people are pretty pleased with yields. Uh, we even had some people report some record yields of like some 260 on corn. Um, in case, but you know, you, you hear some other areas that are 162 and they're not that far away. So it's just very spotty and, and varies quite a bit. In the case of beans, probably the lowest I've heard in beans is kind of in that mid 60 range. Um, you know, I did hear some up in the upper 70s. And so that's pretty much the range in that mid 60s, upper 70s. And so I think people are pretty pleased with that. That's probably the range I'm gonna fall in on, on my farm here. And, uh, and so, you know, I guess you can't complain too much about that, especially considering, you know, that dry, hot August that we had. And I know a lot of air, other areas have had it even worse than what we've had here. So, um, you know, we're, in the case of the corn, we're definitely well above our APH. And uh, in the case of the soybeans, we're probably at or slightly above our APH. So um, what we need now is better prices going forward, obviously. Um, you know, hopefully that uh, you know, seasonal will kick in here as we kind of crest over the hump uh, of harvest. And, uh, you know, I, I'm, in my case, I'm going to end up probably storing most of my soybeans and, and uh, you know, hope for better prices here. I think we'll, you know, our basis continues to be strong, and uh, and so I guess we're. I'm looking towards the fact that uh, there might be a weather hiccup in Brazil um, in in the planting season down there, and uh, also I think next year, you know, we're, we're, we probably overcorrected too much planting too much corn this year, and I think uh, U.S. farmers are probably going to go back to to lowering that increasing soybean price soybean acres to to take advantage of those prices because we still have pretty you know, overall profitable prices, you know, obviously they aren't at the $15, $16 level, but uh, they're, you know, if you can get 70 bushel beans, it's still pretty profitable. All right, that'll do for this episode. Thanks for hopping on and good luck with the rest of your harvest. All right, thank you, Brian. For premium content, you can head over to the Comstock Report and don't forget to hit that subscribe button.